your examiner cannot let you go without knowing your marks. They need to know before you end your test. They need to know. So what happens is that, let's say that in part two, you gave your answer and they are thinking you are a band six, right? So what they do is, all right, I think he's a band six. Let's go to part three so I can see if I can notice some band seven or band eight vocabulary. That's what happens here. Today, you have the chance to test your abilities as if you were in the test, in the IELTS speaking test. So, are you ready? Blimey English. Today we are going to have another speaking practice. You have the chance to test your abilities as if you were in the test, in the IELTS speaking test. So are you ready? You need to practice your skills, otherwise you would only have the knowledge in your mind. But remember, knowledge is the key, but practicing is what opens the door. So you need to test yourself. That's what you need to do. And this, this class is the perfect opportunity for you to try. Here you can try new vocabulary. You can try new expressions that you might not be sure of because this is a safe environment. Okay? I will give you time to answer the questions. I will give you a reasonable amount of time and then I'll keep on with that. All right? Let's get started. The first related vocabulary I've got to you is this one here, a slice of life, a slice of life. If a film, a piece of literature or a play is described as a slice of life, it means that it shows the ordinary details of real life. It reflects real life, right? I will give you two examples. The first one is that movie we saw yesterday is definitely a slice of life. That movie we saw yesterday is definitely a slice of life. The second one is, that comedy show is a slice of life. That comedy show is a slice of life. It means that it reflects reality, right? The next one is fine art. Fine art. These are drawings, paintings and sculptures that are admired for their beauty and have no practical use. You simply admire them. You can look at them, admire their beauty and enjoy and think about how they were made or how intelligent the person behind was. That's it. I will give you two examples. The first one is, I went to this fine art gallery and I had the chance to see many famous paintings. I went to this fine art gallery and I had the chance to see many famous paintings. And the example to you, do you like fine art? I find it fascinating. Do you like fine art? I find it fascinating. Then we can go to the next one, pictorial, pictorial. So pictorial is something shown in the form of a picture or a photograph something that is shown in that form, right? If someone is telling you something using images, pictures, then that is pictorial. And I will give you two examples. The first one is, the exhibition is a pictorial record of the town in the 19th century. The exhibition is a pictorial record of the town in the 19th century. Example two, this biography is a pictorial history of his life. This biography is a pictorial history of his life. It means it tells his life, showing it in pictures, right, in images. Let's see the next one. Picturesque. Picturesque. We use this expression to talk especially of a place when it is attractive in appearance, especially an old-fashioned one, in an old-fashioned way. I will give you two examples. The first one is the picturesque narrow streets of the old city. 
the picturesque narrow streets of the old city. And the next one. Oh, this pot has a picturesque view of the valley. Oh, this pot has a picturesque view of the valley. The next one is work of art. Work of art. This is an object made by an artist of great skill, especially a painting, drawing or a statue. So if that is made by someone quite skillful or quite famous, that could be a work of art. I will give you two examples too. The example one is the thieves stole several valuable works of art. The thieves stole several valuable works of art. And the example two, that museum shows many unique works of art. That museum shows many unique works of art. Let's go see the next one. The visual arts. The visual arts. These mean the arts of painting and sculpture rather than literature and music. So literature and music, the first would be the written art and the second one would be the melodic or the sonority related art. Now, the visual arts are painting and sculpture, for example, things that you can see, right? I will give you two examples. The first one is, are you more interested in literature or in the visual arts? Are you more interested in literature or in the visual arts? And the example two, the visual arts tend to be more attractive to some people. The visual arts tend to be more attractive to some people. The next word is gallerist. Gallerist. So a gallerist is a person who owns an art gallery or a person who shows and sells artists work in galleries. I'll repeat that for you. A gallerist is a person who owns an art gallery or a person who shows and sells artists work in galleries, in art galleries. I will give you two examples. The first one is, I'd like to become a famous gallerist someday. I'd like to become a famous gallerist someday. And the example two is, we were introduced to this painting by our friend. She's a gallerist. We, uh, we were introduced to this painting by our friend. She's a gallerist. Let's go see the next one. Myopost. Myopost. So in the US, you can hear this as a myostone. They mean the same. Myostone and myopost. The difference is that myostone is more used in the US, whereas myopost is more used in the UK. So a myopost is an important event in the development or history of something or in someone's life. I'll repeat that for you. A myopost or a myostone is an important event in the development of history of something in someone's life. I will give you two examples. The example one is moving to Canada was a milepost in my life. Moving to Canada was a milepost in my life. And the example two, the two great wars are definitely relevant milepost in mankind history. The two great wars are definitely relevant milepost in mankind history. Okay, let's go see some advanced words. The first advanced word I've got to you is maverick. Maverick. This means an unusual person. Someone behaving differently from the expected. It's someone who is quite not like the others. Right? Someone who is behaving differently from the expected. Right? I'll give you two examples. The first one is, he's a political maverick. He is a political maverick. And the example two, because of his thoughts, he's considered a maverick. Because of his thoughts, he's considered a maverick. So can you think of something to use this word? Can you think can you think of someone to use this word? The next one is this. Turn of events. Turn of events. So, a turn of events is a change in a situation. 
usually an expected, strange or dramatic change in a situation. I will repeat that for you. A turn of events is a change in a situation. A change that oftentimes is unexpected, strange or dramatic. Okay? And I will give you two examples. The first one is, there has been a turn of events and I can't go anymore. There has been a turn of events and I can't go anymore. And the example two, they were waiting for the results to be released today, but a turn of events took place and they will only know it in two months. They were waiting for the results to be released today, but a turn of events took place and they will only know in two months. All right, let's go see the next advanced word. Tedious. Tedious. So, tedious is an advanced word for boring, dull, vanilla, not special or not interesting. Let me repeat that because I gave you some synonyms that you might not know, right? So, tedious is a synonym, is an advanced word, an advanced synonym for something boring, not special or not interesting. And this is also a synonym for dull. Dull also means something boring, as vanilla. Vanilla is also something boring, not special, right? Let's see some examples. The first one is, this is such a tedious job. This is such a tedious job. And the example two, I simply hate tedious books. I simply hate tedious books. Let's go see the next one. State of the art. State of the art. This means something very modern and using the most recent ideas or methods or something that is the best or most modern of its type. I repeat that for you. State of the art means something very modern and using the most recent ideas or methods or something that is the best or the most modern of its type. I will give you two examples here as well. The first one is, she bought a state-of-the-art computer. She bought a state-of-the-art computer. And the example two, that state-of-the-art system they installed was so expensive. That state-of-the-art system they installed was so expensive. Let's go see the next one. Scarce. Scarce. Scarce is something rare or not available in large amounts. Scarce means something rare or not available in large amounts. I will give you two examples. The first one is, they don't have money. They were working with scarce resources. They don't have money. They were working with scarce resources. And the example two, back in the day, the information you could get about this was so scarce. Back in the day, the information you could get about this was so scarce. Let's go see the next advanced word. And this one is a close one, right? This word is paucity. Paucity. Paucity is the fact that there's too little of something. Paucity is the fact there is too little of something. I will give you two examples about this one as well. The first one is, there is a paucity of information on the ingredients of many cosmetics. There is a paucity of information on the ingredients of many cosmetics. And the example two, police officers in Brazil need to cope with paucity of resources. Police officers in Brazil need to cope with paucity of resources. That's it. That's it for the expressions and words, advanced words. Now, we are going to start with the speaking practice, right? Now you will have the chance to take it as if were the test, the real test, because I'm going to ask you questions as if I were your examiner. For those who don't know how the IELTS test, how the speaking part of the IELTS test works, I will quickly explain for you, right? So the IELTS speaking test is divided in three parts, right? Part one, part two, and part three. 
in part one, your examiner, uh, they're going to ask you more basic and personal questions, right? Questions that might be what you like to do, what you dislike, if you study or if you work, quite simple questions in part one. Then they will move to part two. And in part two, you will be given a um, task card or, or a cue card. It's also called that way. This is a piece of paper with one question and some topics for you to talk about for up to two minutes. That would be part two. Right? You have first, that's why they will give you the task card. You have first one minute to prepare. Okay, you have one minute to prepare before starting your answer. They will give you paper and pencil for you to take your notes. You have one minute so you can take your notes and then start talking for up to two minutes. Then, so sometimes, before moving to part three, they can ask you what we call a follow-up question. A follow-up question would be just one question that your examiner asks you in order to wrap up the conversation before moving on, right? Now, in part three, you're going to discuss things related to part two, but in a more complex and abstract way. That, in my opinion, would be the top of difficulty for candidates because now they need to talk about more complex ideas and they need to really show their level of English because what happens here is your examiner cannot let you go without knowing your marks. They need to know before you end your test. They need to know. So what happens is that Let's say that in part two, you, you gave your answer and they are thinking you are a band six, right? So what they do is, all right, I think he's a band six. Let's go to part three so I can see if I can notice some band seven or band eight vocabulary. That's what happens here, right? So that's why part three is the top of difficulty. That's the part when you need to really show up with a nice level of English to use. I've got the techniques I teach for my students and in my online course that's going to be launched soon. But you, apart from that, you also need to train, to practice, right? First, you need to know what you're doing. That's what my online course is for. First, you need to practice because remember what I said, knowledge is the key. But practicing is what opens the door, right? So in order, for, in order to open the doors of your life, the doors of your test, the doors of your results, you need to practice. That's the whole point of it. And that's what we are going to have right now. I will give you time to prepare. I will give you proper time, a reasonable time to prepare before answering the questions, right? And we are going to have part one, two and three as if this were a test, right? Are you ready? So let's start with questions from part one, okay? The first one is, do you like watching the sky? Mm -hmm. And what is the sky like at night in your hometown? And do you like watching the stars?
And have you ever taken a course about this? Or would you like it? And what is your favorite star? All right, all right, thank you, thank you. All right, now we are going to have part two question. I will give you one minute to prepare, so it's good for you to take your notes, so you might want to have a pencil or a paper and a paper with you, right? If you don't have, go grab it, pause the video, go grab it, because you need to prepare. You need to prepare as if this were a test, right? Go on. Now that you have your pencil and your piece of paper, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to ask you the part two question. I will leave it here on the screen for you to see during that one minute, because that's when you have the question with you as well, for one minute. Then I will simply remove it from the screen and you can start talking for up to two minutes, okay? So the question is, describe an impressive piece of art such as a painting or a sculpture that you saw. You should say what it is, when and where you first saw this work of art, what it looks like, and explain why you like it. You can prepare, you can take your notes. You've got one minute to do that, starting now. All right, all right. You might stop taking a note and could you please start talking?
All right. Thank you. You might stop. Thank you. Okay. Now we are going to discuss a bit more about that in part three. The first question I've got to you is: Do you think art classes are necessary? Why? And how do you think art classes affect children's development? And what kind of art do people do in your country? Mm -hmm. And what benefits can you get from painting as a hobby? And do you think people's preferences or not changed in the past few years? Mm -hmm. And what is the importance of learning about our past?
Mm -hmm. And do you think historical events like wars and land disputes are more or less likely to happen in the future? All right, all right. That is the end of the third part. Okay, what you think? What you reckon? What you find? Was it hard? Was it easy? Tell me. I want to know. So here's the thing. Remember, you need to practice. You also need to learn things to take the test, but you also need to practice, right? This is an important step of your preparation. Don't skip it. Of course, you need to feed your brain with information, relevant information. Remember what I said once, you don't need to know everything to pass the test. You just need to know the right things, right? That's what you get, for example, with my online course that is going to be launched soon, but you also need to test yourself and to prepare that's the thing because when you are preparing you have the chance to practice in a safe environment where you can try new things when you can test your abilities right okay if you liked this video please then consider subscribing blimey english on instagram or Facebook and subscribing to my YouTube channel. You can also listen to the Blimey Cast, which is a podcast that I made for those who are not able to watch the videos, right? This is time for me to go now and to see you in the next videos. Cheers!